Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Warren Bennett. Unfortunately, we haven't got Trev today. Um, it's absolutely soaking. We've had so much rain in the UK and the lawn is absolutely sodden. So keeping his paws dry and out of trouble. This video is all about my favorite drill. And I'm gonna tell you what that is, how it can improve your golf game, actually how to do it properly, because there's always wrong and right way to do everything. So I'm just gonna get the back camera set up and I'll see you in a bit. Um, we've got the flight scope set up. It's not really necessarily about result this. In time, obviously every exercise is, is working towards a good, solid, consistent result. But in the initial starting, especially if you're laying, layering new feelings and movements into your golf swing, it's always good to kind of hit into a net because I think it kind of takes the result out of it. So you can work on those um, mechanics. And this isn't the drill, by the way. I'm just having a little warm up. Just hit three or four initially, just to kind of get my achy bones up and running. So like I was saying, so having exercises into a net is always you know, beneficial to kind of get some new mechanics working, especially through the year, because old habits die hard, don't they? So it's always kind of having, making time for yourselves to work on different movements, work out what's beneficial for you and Consistency of practice, continuity in practice. If you've seen one of my other videos, I can't remember when it when it was or what it was, the video, but I was explaining that I've got I've had the same swing thought. This is my tenth year now. So I've been working on the same things for ten years. So I know what what works and what doesn't work for me. It took <laughs> saying that, it took 30 years to find it. But you know, I'm really happy with I kind of know my faults, so I know how to get out of it. And there's a real lot of confidence I get from that. Having that consistency of practice, that continuity. So every time I go to the range or the net or practice area, and even the golf course, when it starts going wrong a little bit, I kind of got these little anchors to go on. Got these little feelings I can kind of go back to. That gives me the confidence. Any sort of changing of the swing, we all know it's very difficult, don't we? So I'm a great believer in trying to find the one thing that can cure four. And this exercise, I believe, is one of the best. If you can get in the correct position halfway through on the follow through, if you can get in that position, that will take care of everything beforehand. So with every exercise, I would say, always kind of take a bit of time. You don't have to hit it full out, basically. So 50% maximum to start with. Okay, so with this exercise, we're revisiting the hit and hold drill. So the hit and hold drill is this. So I'm gonna kind of talk and hit balls and show you while I'm actually explaining all these positions. So I'm a great believer in, if you can get in the correct position halfway through your follow through, I think everything beforehand will take care of itself. I'm a great believer in that. Because if you get in the wrong position on the follow through, halfway through your follow through, so halfway through is always kind of club parallel, but more importantly, it's kind of your, your arms are parallel to the ground. You can see my right arm is parallel to the ground. If you need to re introduce some release, you can, but we'll go on to that in a little while. So hit and hold exercise. Halfway through your follow through, if you can get in the correct or near correct position halfway through, you're gonna take care of everything before that. And this exercise is for anyone, anyone who's a slicer of the ball or a hooker of the ball. Take some pace off it, 50% maximum, I'd say even slower than that. So you can go full backswing as much as you can anyway, but not full speed. And then you're gonna hit and hold and stop. Didn't hit that one great, a little bit thin, a little bit out to the right. Kick and release. So I'm basically throwing my arms and stopping here. Don't get sucked in and going too hard. So important to keep the pace nice and smooth, everyone. If you take care of business here, and then you're feeling like the club is looking down the line where I'm looking, I'm still keeping my head relatively still. Everything's released up there, you can see, but I'm throwing my arms down the line. Relatively light still. Looks nice and smooth, everyone. Nice coil. But then from here, you're just trying to get in this position, right knee up, right foot up, arms down the line, club down the line. If you want to introduce some release, and you can see the L shape there, you can. If you're a hooker of the ball, keep it nice and straight on the way through. Because keeping that nice and straight on the way through, let's say for a hooker of the ball, we're going to keep it nice and straight. So you're introducing kind of more of a passive release there, you can see with my hands and arms and club. 
The opposite to that, the slicer of the ball would be, the release would be still the same with the club and arms, but you're introducing a little bit more release over with the wrist. Let's do that a little bit more. It was a little bit lazy there. You can see this shot was a bit straighter now. So I'm kind of releasing that club into a bit more of a squarer position. So head nice and still, like you can see with this one. I'll draw the line up, head nice and still, twist, kick and release. Now I haven't looked down, I can't see the result, but I feel like that's gone a little bit straighter than the ones that have gone right. You can see my head is still looking down. I've still released and twisted my body, but my arms are still down the line, but my club is now released. You can see there, that you can still see, now you can see my left hand under my right arm. Pretty straight, if not a slight, slight draw. So you can work, so if you're a hooker of the ball, you can work on a passive release. If you're a slicer of the ball, you can work on a little bit more release with the hands and arms. Then from there, you can work on speed. So I'm gonna say, this swing I've been doing, showing you, is probably about three or four out of 10 doesn't matter what release, I like a kind of passive release because I've got too much. So I'd say that's three out of 10 in terms of speed. Now let's speed that up. Same pace back swings, we're not rushing it. Okay, that popped out to the right. So the ball is telling me, this is where it's good to start introducing a little bit of ball because the ball's telling you everything. Best teacher in the world, by the way, remember? So the ball's telling me, popped out a little bit to the right. So now I'm gonna work on a little bit more snap with my hands. I'm still gonna introduce some throw down, some extension. So remember, the hit and hold is all about where you are halfway through. So backswing, kick, hit and hold. So I really ramped that up a little bit. I bet that fit, felt a little bit straighter. So I've got a bit more club face square onto that. And there we go, a bit more distance, beautiful. So whatever your hands are doing, the toe of the club's going to show that. So you slice of the ball, you're looking for your hands and arms to be down the line and probably the toe of your club or the leading edge of your club, you can see from the behind view there, is looking a little bit more left of 12 o'clock. Back swing, kick and hold. Don't get sucked in for going too long. It's not a distance exercise in terms of length of swing. You can see there, my hands and arms have gone down the line, probably a little bit exaggerated and the club face is looking up. There's probably a certain speed I can get to where I can stop. It's probably gonna be about a six. This is probably as hard as I can go with stopping. After that, the momentum's gonna take me through that position. Head nice and still, and then kick and release. Release for you guys is probably a little bit more knee and foot, and then a little bit more body as well. So you're looking now for the club face to be looking up, as you can see there, leading edge is perfectly up and then the butt of the club is looking into my ever-expanding ever belly, okay? Keeping it simple, keeping it consistent. You've got repetition, you've got good strike, and you've got consistency. Okay, one more hit and hold. Do a little few practice swings if you like. Kick from the top of the back swing. I'm feeling like my arms are just dropping. I'm not really focusing on any type of pull down or anything like that. There's no exaggerated speed. I'm just allowing this to kick through. You can see it's probably exaggerated. But most importantly, I'm kicking and keeping my head still. Now, I don't need to be relatively flexible to do this. I'll just keep this club down the line and it's looking into my belly there. You see, I'm still looking down and after that, obviously, I'm going to swing through and look up and hopefully see the ball go down the middle. So thanks very much, everyone. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you very much for everyone's support. And um, if you've got any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you and I'll get back to you and answer them as soon as I can. So from a bit of a drizzly actually UK now. So I'll jump inside, give Trevor a cuddle and I'll see you on the next one. Have a great golfing week, everyone. Stay healthy on and off the course and I'll see you next time. Cheerio.